You are listening to the Namibians audio recording. Hello, everyone, and a very warm welcome to the Namibian podcast. I'm Tuyakula Musheko, and today I'm joined by a very special guest. She's the country's senior partner and tax leader for PwC Namibia, Chantelle Hasselman. Welcome, Chantelle, and thank you for joining us today. Thanks to you for that introduction and thank you to the Namibian also. Thanks for having me. Great. Um, it's been just a little under a year since the first lockdown was introduced and a lot of lives and a lot of livelihoods as well have been lost in this year. Many economies worldwide have been left devastated and as a response, um, a lot of countries have looked to amending tax laws as a remedial measure to provide much needed relief. Just to give you a quick overview, the trends that we have seen, a lot of countries have gone to reduce VAT rates or to even zero rate um, on PPE and medical equipment. And they also um, have zero rated, or sorry, they have exempted, tax exempted a lot, of, a lot of essential services such as transport, storage, and distribution. So, Chantal, can you just tell us, in your view, what's happening worldwide? Um, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a very relevant topic. Um, and ever since these um, measures were announced, it is important um, that even for a smaller economy um, in Africa, uh, we need to make sure that we keep abreast of the developments globally. Uh, from a tax efficiency perspective mm -hmm. um, and also to make sure that our own legislation is not stagnant and does speak to, to the local needs being experienced in the country, especially in times of, for example, um, droughts and mm -hmm. like the current pandemic impact of droughts. Okay. And um, just in layman's terms, um, why is this referred to as transactional taxes? And um, how is how does this impact um, good uh, prices on goods, like everyday goods? Yeah. So the, the most common transactional taxes um, um, would be, for example, import VAT. That's when goods are okay. imported into Namibia. Okay. And that VAT um, would be payable when the goods reach Namibia. That's where the it comes in via road transport, mm -hmm. air transport, or it's shipped in. Um, it is payable, um, whether it's imported by a business uh, or by me and you in our personal capacity also. Okay. So um, this VAT will not have a, um, may not be a final tax to the importer, mm -hmm. specifically our VAT registered entities importing goods, mm -hmm. but it is still a significant cash flow impact that should be managed. Yeah. Um, and then another um, topical transactional tax in the indirect tax space would be customs duties that's payable. Yeah. So the customs duties, again, is levied under the Customs and Excise Act. And mm -hmm. there it, it heavily depends upon um, the country of export, mm -hmm. the origin of that country. And then one also looks at the type of goods being, being imported. So we call it commodities in that space. So okay. certain commodities would be exempted from customs duties. Mm -hmm. Others would have an inflated rate. Others would have a, a, a lower rate. So it pretty much depends upon what is important uh, okay. or important, sorry. But for customs duties, um, that's a final tax, whether okay. it's, a, it's a business importing the goods or whether it is uh, me and you in our private capital. So the essence with final taxes is that it inflates the local price okay. of getting the goods to the final consumer as well. Okay. So having said that, um, can you just give us some examples of countries worldwide who have impl implemented this tax, this covert relief tax um, legislation? Sorry. Yes. So the the latest um, to our knowledge is mostly EU countries okay. with such relief measures. So yes, it's, uh, when I scroll through the list, it's very interesting to note the different approaches by these countries. Mm -hmm. But overall, one can definitely see that it's, it's all an attempt at getting the goods more affordable to households at the end of the day. Okay. So we, uh, yes, we contributed an article to, to the Namibian of 5 March mm -hmm. uh, with a table summary of such examples. Mm -hmm. And 
um, to the listeners who wish to also further read up on these announcements are more, more than welcome to follow that publication. Okay. So, but for purposes of today's discussion, a quick overview to you would be yeah. that, for example, Austria proposed uh, to zero rate the local sale of their masks and the import of masks by, by NGOs specifically. Okay. Belgium follows suit by having a reduced VAT rate on masks, so they reduce it. Um, also, France reduced their VAT rate on face masks, mm-hmm. but France then extends it to, to hydrogels and to protective clothing as well. Um, and then uh, the list continues where, for example, uh, Spain would go all out by also having relief on closely related services. Okay. So a very wide net there, um, covering transport services, storage services, distribution services in respect of COVID-19 um, goods to be fully exempted from VAT. Okay. So that is where I would stop. It's not the full list to you. Okay. But as you've heard, most of these measures are directed at the, the current need, your typical, the mask, the sanitizing, the protective clothing, um, and then my understanding that vaccines uh, will also be considered. So at the end of the day, moving an indirect tax makes it more affordable to, to households. Okay. Um, and um, all of those amendments or announcements have a sunset clause. Okay. Uh, the longest I've seen, it, it's stretching up till December 2022. Okay. So um, indeed making way for, for the uncertainty that lies ahead of when we no longer have a high consumption and a high import of these commodities. Okay, awesome. So, um, so Chantal, just bringing it closer to home, um, we haven't seen these taxes implemented in Namibia. Um, why do you think the Namibian government hasn't considered it as of yet? Why do you think they haven't reacted to um, the current need? Um, it's, yeah. So, um, yes, to you, the, the, I'm not saying there's, there's no conversation on the need, All right. um, but there's definitely no uh, bill drafted okay. or obviously legislated on, on this topic. Yes. of indirect tax tax uh, reliefs on these commodities. Uh, what, what we should also keep in mind is that so these only started in those countries now in 2021. It's a very, it's a recent uh, conversation. Yes. Um, so, and, and in order to have that for Namibia, for example, it would start from a, a proposed amendment. And, you know, with proposed amendments, it should be stakeholder engagement, yes. stakeholder involvement. Yes. Then we have policy drafting and then being legislated. Yes. So it, it sounds like a, it's, it's um, a, a lengthy, time-consuming process. But my message would be, so if we are to start the conversation today, mm-hmm. yes, we are late, but we we not necessarily too late. Okay. So in order to have, for example, um, this being passed uh, as, as, as legislation in Namibia, uh, as amendments to the VAT and the Customs and Excise Acts, mm-hmm. um, it's, it's not too late. It will be a challenge, gripping the benefits still in the 2021 calendar year, mm. uh, but definitely perhaps for the 2022 calendar year, uh, we, we also uh, might still have high consumption of these commodities. Okay. Um, and having mentioned that, um, what are then the impact that we're going to feel based on the fact that the government hasn't implemented any te- COVID tax relief, uh, relief um, legislation? So what what does it mean for you and me on an everyday? Yeah. We buy masks and we buy PPE all the time. So what is, what is the effect that that's going to have on us? Yeah, so as, as you rightly stated, we we consuming these goods uh, not even just for this year since early last year. Yeah. Um, for some of us on a daily basis, others on a weekly basis. If I just think in my own household how we go to mosques, for example. So in essence, um, it's it's not too late to wake up, but um, definitely um, late as we foresee the current efforts like masking and sanitizing. It's it's far from over, mm-hmm. and so as a country, we still. Um, reliant a lot, unfortunately, but we are reliant on 
um, the efforts of importing these commodities yeah. um, for, for, for a while to come still. So um, that means the prices of these commodities to me mm -hmm. are inflated, mm -hmm. uh, where there's an indirect tax that has been levied and that's stuck in, in the process. Mm -hmm. Or if I import any of those as a, as a final user in my personal capacity, yeah. then I will have to pay that import that myself and that will be a final tax to me. And then specifically on the topic of vaccines, for example. Yeah. So vaccines would be seen as the vaccine itself would be seen as medical goods. Yeah. So from a VAT perspective, the classification of goods or services are quite important and what and, and, yeah. and well defined in the act as well. Okay. So the, the medical services are the exemption that we currently enjoy. Okay. But that will be the service of the medical practitioner that is um um, affecting the vac the vaccine, okay. the consultation fee, for example, okay. that will be that exempted. Um, but the vaccine itself will be like normal medicines, like currently medicine and pills, etc., are all medical goods yeah. and are subject to VAT at fifteen percent. Okay. Which means it inflates the price and the impact. For example, if you do have a medical aid, it inflates the cost to the to the medical aid available amount with okay. the fifteen percent VAT. Okay. So that that's the current impact, and um, that's where governments globally um, should consider the uh, relief um, uh, where there's anticipation of a of bulk imports and local distribution, warehousing, and ultimate selling of vaccines. Mm -hmm. Because the only way to get the vaccine to me and you without being impacted by a 15% VAT for, or import tax, for example, mm -hmm. would be uh, having it as an import by the state, yeah. where imports directly done by the state are VAT exempted. Yeah. And then also having the local provision of, of, that, um, um, of that goods uh, having it as as free because when there's no consideration or price as we yeah. know it there can't be a VAT charge okay. so it should be totally free of charge yeah. um, um, in and and in that manner um, it can it can get um, fifteen percent for example more affordable to 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 the end users okay. other than that we we have um, private um, organizations playing a role mm -hmm. in the effective rollout and administrating of, of the vac vaccine process mm -hmm. um, then it is a, it's a, it's a business transaction it's a distribution of medical goods it's a sale yeah. of a medical good yes. and to, to that impact to that effect um, a 15 percent VAT would be applicable okay all right thank you so much Chantal. um thank you for joining us today and thank you guys for tuning in and listening. Please don't forget to subscribe to the, the, the Namibian YouTube channel and it's bye for now.